Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to this service of worship as we today celebrate Epiphany and are gathered at Christ's table to celebrate the Sacrament of Holy Communion. Welcome to those of you who have dug out of the snow on this snowy uh, January morning to be here in the sanctuary of Scottsford United Church. And welcome to those of you who are worshiping from your homes and uh, joining us through our Facebook um, channel, our Facebook page or our YouTube channel. We're glad to have you share. Happy New Year to one and all. And as we begin this new journey of 2021, may it hold for you and yours many blessings. Our worship leadership team today includes our organist, Stuart Monroe. Our lay reader today is Donnie Gunn, who is a member of Scottsford United Church here. And once again, we're grateful to Christine McKenzie, who is behind the camera, uh, attending to our video production. Special music has added much to our services through the Advent and Christmas seasons, and that continues today as the Scottsford Lions Brook United Church Choir We'll offer a couple of anthems which have been pre-recorded. And also we will have a duet today by Carol and Evan Bailey of this Scottsdale United Church. Each week, those of us uh, who are on our Pastoral Charge email list receive an at-home bulletin. And I know it gets shared from us to others. And today our at-home worship bulletin is dedicated in memory of Bob McCollum, forever loved and remembered by his wife Phyllis and family. As we are beginning this new year together, it is our custom to uh, celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion, to gather in faith at the table of Christ to celebrate God's love for us and for all. And uh, we will be participating in that sacrament here in our sanctuary. And if you are worshiping with us from home and forgot that I had mentioned that in previous services, you might just want to hit the pause button right now and go get some bread or crackers and some juice or wine and, uh, and then come back and be ready to uh, share with us at the table of Christ. You will recognize this familiar music, a piece for epiphany that uh, Stuart will offer as our intro this morning. Christ 
in this new year, even in unexpected places. And may we notice the presence of your love throughout all our days. We pray these things in the name of Christ, light for the world. Amen.
Our second scripture reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. And it's the, the visit of the Magi. And Matthew's telling the story of the Magi who studied the sky and followed the star which led them to the Christ child. And this is taken from the, the Bible, the message, which is a Bible in contemporary language. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem village, Judah territory, this was during Herod's kingship, a band of scholars arrived in Jerusalem from the, from the east. They asked around, where can we find and pay homage to the newborn king of the Jews? We observed a star in the eastern sky that signaled his birth. We're on a pilgrimage to worship him. When word of their inquiry got to Herod, he was terrified. And not Herod alone, but most of Jerusalem as well. Herod lost no time. He gathered all the high priests and religious scholars in the city together and asked, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? They told him, Bethlehem, Judah territory. The prophet Micah wrote it plainly. This is what Micah wrote. It's you, Bethlehem, in Judah's land, no longer bringing up the rear. From you will come the leader, who will shepherd, rule my people by Israel. Herod then arranged a secret meeting with the scholars from the east. Pretending to be as devout as they were, he got them to tell him exactly when the birth announcement star appeared. Then he told them the prophecy about Bethlehem and said, Go find this child, leave no stone unturned. As soon as you find him, send word, and I'll join you at once in your worship. Instructed by the king, they set off. Then the star appeared again, the same star they had seen in the eastern skies. It led them on until it hovered over the place of the child. They could hardly contain themselves. They were in the right place. They had arrived at the right time. They entered the house and saw the child in the arms of Mary, his mother. Overcome, they knelt and worshipped him. Then they opened their, their luggage and presented gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. In a dream, they were warned not to report back to Herod. So they worked out another route, left the ter territory without being seen, and returned to their own country.
Today is, of course, the Sunday closest to that day on the Christian calendar called Epiphany, or January 6th. Sometimes referred to, of course, as Old Christmas, or Little Christmas, or from Shakespeare, Twelfth Night. That day, January 6th, is yet celebrated as Christ's birth by the Orthodox Church and by Ukrainian Christians. For us, in our tradition of the Christian faith, it is the time where we remember and focus not on the stable in Bethlehem, but upon the visitors from the East. The Magi. Those visitors have been depicted as many things, as kings, as astrologers, as scholars, as wise men. And we refer to them as Magi. In legends, they've been given names. It's not biblical, but they've been called Balthazar, Melchior, and Caspar. We often Envision that there were three of them, right? But did you notice in the story as Donnie read it? There's no mention of how many of these travelers and visitors there were. And in fact, if you listened carefully, you heard how they came to the house where Jesus was, not to a stable, which is a pretty good clue that this happened beyond the time of Jesus' birth, when Mary and Joseph and their new family of their son were living in some, some home. We often probably think that there's three of them, as there are probably in that nativity over there, right? Because there were three gifts. Three gifts are mentioned in the story. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And so by association, the tradition has had it that there were perhaps three visitors, but there may have been more. They came with these kingly gifts, according to Matthew's Gospel. And did you notice this morning in the passage from Isaiah that Johnny shared, two of those gifts were mentioned long, long before the birth of Jesus. In Isaiah's prophecy proclaiming the day when God's glory would rise up upon the people with new light, he said that folks would come with frankincense and gold and offer them in praise of God as people would come to the light of this new dawning day. And so as Matthew's telling the story, he clearly makes a connection to what Isaiah had thought would happen some future day. The time when the people of Israel would experience restoration, a new light shining for them. And so Matthew describes these three visitors coming and kneeling to pay homage, offering gifts of gold and frankincense, and adding myrrh which was used for the anointing of the dead as a special order. Whoever these visitors were, and however many there were of them, wherever they came from, or whatever we call them, we know this about them. They were seekers. They were people searching the skies, searching their world, searching their hearts, perhaps, for signs and gifts of the holy, of the sacred. And I think we're a little bit like them in that way, are we not? Are we too, in our journey of life, also not seeking for meaning? Seeking for understanding? Seeking an experience of that which is greater than ourselves? The sacred or the holy? The epiphany, as you probably well know, literally means manifestation or revelation. And it reminds us how God was revealed to these mysterious seekers who followed a star, a bright star in the sky, which led them to a child named Jesus. And so moved were they, as you know this story, that they knelt down. They offered their praise and their respect and their homage, and they presented gifts of gratitude and of blessing. As we journey with them on our own searches for God, may it be that we discover our own epiphanies, Epiphanies of the divine that's born into our lives, into our world now, in this new year just begun. And may we too, like them, I would suggest, respond with gifts that we share, with the gifts of our lives offered in service to God. Now, Isaiah mentioned 
frankincense, and gold. Did you also notice that he mentions camels? In that prophecy, looking ahead to that day when the new light would shine in this world, Isaiah talked about how a caravan of camels would come, that the place would be just filled with camels, bringing people from distant lands such as Midian and Ephah. Now, I don't know a whole lot about camels, folks. But I do know that camels were an essential uh, animal in that desert environment and used to transport both people and goods. And is there a camel in our nativity, Yarnie and Shannon? Can you see? Yes. Yes, there is. Yeah. I forgot to check before the service. I figured there would be. In our other church and our other service this morning, the camel uh, was quite prominent in the nativity scene. Not only are the stable animals often pictured, but so too are camels a part of this story. I know that some of you will have worshipped from home last week through our Bible service for the first Sunday of Christmas. And if you did, as I've heard some have, uh, quite enjoyed the barn segment, where I was uh, kept uh, on my toes by the hens in the O'Brien's barn, with the chickens. And as I mentioned last week in that service, the animals are often noted as part of the story, how they were there at the birth of Christ and the legends and traditions and the carols like the friendly beasts often portray how the animals have their own epiphanies, how they have their own coming to understand that this child Jesus is somehow a special child, a special gift of God. Well, before we leave the Christmas season, which we do this week, I want to share with you another story. And it is an epiphany story. And it doesn't feature the Magi, though. It features camels. Because they, too, are a significant part of this tale. Even Isaiah, prophesying and thinking ahead to the day, acknowledged that camels would be somehow a sign as people returned, bringing their camels of the light of God shining anew. The story that I want to read today focuses on particularly a camel as the main character who carried maybe the Magi, but likely their belongings across the desert sands as they watched that star and moved toward their destination. The main character in this story, his name is Hashmakaka. Hashmakaka is the, the camel here who has a shining role. And this story is entitled, The Last Straw. It's written by Frederick Thurry, and the book is illustrated by Velasta Van Kempen. And unfortunately, I'm not going to uh, be able to share the illustrations with you, but I do share the story today. And I want to note, it's a Canadian story. It was written by Frederick Thurry uh, for the Toronto Children's Chorus as a musical. And the libretto from that was uh, uh, taken and formed into the, the book here before me. You probably know that saying, right, about the straw? The straw that broke the camel's back? Well, or the last straw? This story takes that old proverb and makes use of it, giving it a twist at the end. So I hope today you will enjoy an epiphany story, The Last Straw. Sit back and relax. And uh, just so you might see what's coming, there is Hashmakaka pictured on the front, and uh, there he is on the back of the book as well. The Last Straw. Hashmakaka, the old camel, was asleep in the desert night. He dreamed of all the water in the world and a hump that could hold an entire sea. Hearing voices, Hashmakaka opened one eye. Hashmakaka, Hashmakaka. Reluctantly, Hashmakaka opened the other eye. Why should I wake up? He groaned. The sand whirled up into the moonlit sky. 
You have been chosen, the voices whispered. The sand seemed to shift again. You will carry gifts to a baby king. Who are you? Hashemakaka wanted to know, for he was an old camel, and he felt he had earned his sleep. You will carry frankincense, myrrh, and gold. The wise men have chosen you. Hashemakaka got up very slowly. Why me? If these men are so wise, don't they know about my joints, my gout? My sciatica? What did you say I am to carry? How much will it weigh? Besides, I have other commitments. There's a water drinking competition at Grand Gal. And then I really must go to the cut chewing convention at Beamish. The sand blew feverishly, cutting into the black night. Hashmakaka was startled and decided he had better do as the voices said. Who knew what made the sand move like creatures with great wings? When do I start? He asked carefully. Today. And at that, the sand voices disappeared, and it was morning. It was still early, as the servants of the wise man placed the precious gifts on Hashmakaka's back. The young camels ran to their good friend. They all looked up to him because he was old and they thought him wise. You must be a very special camel, they sighed. I am very special. Hashmakaka puffed out his chest in pride and then he said something just a little foolish. I'm not so old. I'm still as strong as ten horses. And I have been chosen, chosen to carry rich gifts to the new baby king. Can we come too? asked the young camel, the youngest camel, who never wanted to be left behind. Are we not your friends? shouted another. You can walk beside me, Hashmakaka replied in his most regal voice. And the long journey began. At noon, a herd of mountain goats came into view. Hashmakaka thought that they had come a very long way from their mountain home in the north. What is it you want? Hashmakaka called out. We have heard tell of the new king who is to be born. Please, take our humble gift with you. It's milk. Milk for the king. You want me to carry milk? Hashmakaka sputtered in shock. I am not a milk-bearing camel. I am not ordinary like you. The young camels chorused. No, he is not ordinary. They looked up to him with their big brown eyes. He's strong. Why, he's as strong as ten horses. Hashmakaka muttered to himself, My joints, my gout, my sciatica. And aloud he said grandly, Give me your gift. At one o'clock, he was stopped by a family of millers. Look, said the youngest camel, they're carrying bags of brown corn. Do you suppose it's for the new king? They will have to carry it themselves, Hashmakaka replied. They can follow that star just like the rest of us. The young camels crowded around Hashmakaka eagerly. But you're so strong. You're as strong as ten horses. Hashmakaka felt weary just looking at those bags. But he said to the millers, Give me your heavy bags. I'll carry them. At two o'clock the next day, young ladies gave Hashmakaka their fine silks. At least it doesn't weigh anything, he thought. At three o'clock, an old man in fine clothes gave him two rare birds in silver cages. At four o'clock, some merchants gave him pillars of oak that had come all the way from Lebanon. At five o'clock, a group of bakers gave him their finest sweet meats and pastries. At six o'clock, the sun finally went down, 
and the crowds melted into the coming wind. Hosh Makaka gratefully sank into the sin. In the kind darkness, he didn't have to pretend that he was as strong as ten horses. Hosh Makaka became aware that he didn't seem as dark as usual. He looked up, and he saw the splendor of the skies and the special brightness of the star that they had been told to follow. He fell asleep, wondering about the sand voices and the wings that he thought he could almost see. But as the sun rose over the desert hills, it was hard to remember the wonder of that star. For the new day brought new pains and new burdens for Hashemakaka. I don't think I will make it. I can't carry any more. My legs are getting weaker. My gout, my sciatica, my joints. I'm too loaded down. Word of the caravan had spread like sand before a desert wind. People lined the route, holding up their gifts for Hashemakaka to take to the baby king. There were jars full of honey and baskets of money. There were large rolls of leather and jewels and beads. And last but not least, there were 20 gallons of wine. Hashemakaka moaned to himself, this will bring me to ruin, this fruit of the vine. But then the youngest camel cried out, Look, look, it's Bethlehem, there. You've made it, Hashemakaka. You are as strong as ten horses. Hashemakaka knew he could do, could just do it, if he did not stop until he arrived at the spot beneath the stone. He could. He knew he could. Just then, out of the growing darkness, a small voice said, I have a gift for the baby. Ashmakaka looked down on a tiny child. Please, child, no more gifts. It has no weight. It's long and light. It's for the king who was born this night. It's little, the child added. Too little is too much. Hashemakaka whispered. Did I not hear them say that you were as strong as ten horses? asked the child. Well, uh, yes, I am, sort of. But my joints, my gouge. Hashemakaka looked into the child's eyes and his heart melted. Yes, child, give it to me, this smaller than small gift. What harm can it do? It's for his bed. It's all I have. No problem at all, said Hashemakaka bravely, if foolishly. All this time, Hashemakaka kept walking because he knew if he stopped, he could not start again. Now he could see the star that shone down upon a lowly stable. Child, do it now. Place your straw upon my back as I approach the new king. Hashemakaka entered the stable. My knees are loosening. My legs, they wobble. My back is breaking. Will this last straw cause me to fall? And with that, Hashemakaka fell to his knees. Oh my, he thought, this is no way for a camel to behave. They will say that Hashmakaka, the weak camel, Hashmakaka, the proud camel, should not have traveled this far. The wise men noticed Hashmakaka. Quickly, they too knelt. They're mocking me now, falling on their knees, heads bent over like gnarled old trees. And then, from the humble manger, a tiny hand reached out and touched Hashemakaka. His pain seemed to disappear. He could no longer feel his burden. Hashemakaka whispered to the baby, Hosanna from Hashemakaka. Accept these gifts kindly. They come from far and wide. 
but were brought by a beast who once acted blindly. And from that time on, there was no burden, great or small, that Hashemachah would not carry. I thought this to be a good story for now, for this year's epiphany. Because I know as we have come through the last 10 months or so, and as we approach and enter into this new year, I know that many folk are feeling burdened, are feeling the heavy burden of this pandemic weighing upon us, the guidelines and the protocols the uncertainty about the future and when or if things will improve. It is a burden. And yet, we also carry our own personal burdens, our worries about health for ourselves or family, the grief that still is fresh in some of our lives, the worries about finances and economics and the future. The struggle of relationships that don't feel easy. All of these are burdens that we carry to. In the story, it was when the Christ child reached out that Hashemakaka felt his burdens relieved, felt something of new life, of strength, and of peace. And so I hope for us all. <coughs> that in this new year of 2021, whatever it holds and however much longer we have to live with COVID-19, no matter what it is that we feel burdened by in these days, remember that the Christ child is born. God has come to be with us, beside us, to shoulder our burdens, to offer love and strength and care to May this be in your heart as you move forward into this new year. Amen.
like the Magi of such a long time ago, we too have received the revelation of God's light in the Christ. And like the Magi of long ago, we too respond similarly, offering our gifts, expressions of our gratitude, of our worship. We've placed gifts in the plates today. Some of you, as you've arrived, some of us give them by our pre-authorized remittance. They are gifts to give praise to God. But not only do we give, here at this table, the table of Christ, we receive. And we receive far more than we could ever give. We receive the grace of God's welcoming love revealed in Christ. We receive the nourishment of faith as we remember Jesus, born in a stable manger, who grew in God's way to show us the light of sacred presence to show us the vision of a world in which justice and peace prevail. All are welcome to this table of Christ, to share in this holy sacrament. May it be that all the gifts that we give and receive today reflect the light of Christ's love. I welcome Dami now to be the voice of the people as we enter into our communion prayer. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace with will to all. Let us open our hearts to God. With wonder and praise, we open ourselves to God. Let us give thanks as we are welcome to Christ's table. We offer joyful thanks to God. Thank you, God. Let us bow together as we pray. Reader of light, giver of life, and source of love. We give thanks today as we gather at this table on the first Sunday in a new year. When the stars burst forth with light, your sacred presence was revealed. When the rainbow reflected the light in a marvel of color, and it was seen as a sign of hope, your sacred presence was revealed. When a people in slavery were released into the light of a new day of freedom, your sacred presence was revealed. And when a radiant star heralded a child's birth and led the way for those who sought after a new kingdom of justice and peace, then your sacred presence was again revealed. We give thanks today for the sacred presence revealed in the splendors of creation around us, even on this snowy morning. We give thanks for the sacred presence revealed in the scripture stories handed on through generations and in more contemporary stories that speak the truth in love. We give thanks for sacred presence revealed in the works of justice and liberation, past and present. And for that sacred presence revealed in a child born to Mary and Joseph, the one whose way was made ready by John, whose birth was heralded by angelic songs. And we are thankful that your sacred presence, O oh God, still stirs within us and is still revealed to us. Even when we turn away from you, you keep faith with us, and yet come to us in a glimpse of light, a whisper of love, a moment of grace. In gratitude today, we open ourselves to divine mysteries at Christ's table. And we remember Jesus, whom we claim as the Prince of Peace and Herald of Hope, whose words and actions testify to your truth and your justice. We remember how he brought sight to the blind and healing to the sick, how he gave hope to the despairing and freedom to the oppressed. And so we praise you, God, of redeeming light, and we claim anew your gift, which evil cannot destroy. The community of followers which had glimpsed your light in Jesus knew him to be raised and alive with them even beyond them, as do we. In Christ you have revealed your gracious love for all creation. You've shown us that your light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. Therefore we join with all creation and the stars in the heavens to praise you in an ancient song of faith. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Hosanna in the highest. Powerful and tender God, in Jesus we recognize the fullness of your grace, and we join in solidarity with him in care for this world. We pray for understanding and reconciliation among the brokenness of the peoples of this world, indigenous and non-indigenous, racialized and non-racialized peoples, followers of different religious traditions and of none. We pray for healing and wholeness of mind, body, and spirit for all who are ill. We pray that gifts of hope and promise might come to those who live in despair, who live with grief or with turmoil. We pray that all who are fearful will be encouraged in these days, that all who will disregard or harm others will be transformed. We hold into the light of sacred presence those who are close to our hearts and our thoughts in these days. And in our gathering at this table today, we remember that when Jesus ate with his friends, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Each time you do this, remember me. And then he took a cup of wine, and after giving thanks, he passed it to his friends, and he said, Drink the wine of heaven. This cup that is poured out for you is the promise God made in my blood. Whenever you drink it, remember me. God of mysteries revealed in the stars and in Jesus of Nazareth, whom we confess as Messiah, we offer you this bread and cup today as we rejoice in the gift of your grace, remembering Christ's life and death and celebrating his resurrection while we await with hope the fulfillment of your reign of love and the dawning of your full day of justice and peace. We pray that your spirit will bless what we do here together, that we and the gifts we share may be light, life, and love for one another and for all the world. In the light of your incarnate word and kindled in our hearts by faith, and may this loaf and cup shine forth in our lives to dispel the darkness and to reveal your glory. Eternal God, we praise you through Christ, your word made flesh, and in the power of your life-giving spirit, we join our voices to pray, as Jesus taught those who would follow him. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. this sacrament, we celebrate our Creator's love. With the sacrament, we remember Jesus, a human being so open to God's sacred presence that he shone to reveal God's way, God's way of holy love. This celebration is a festival of our faith in which we participate in the Word becoming flesh and dwelling among us and within us. So let us give thanks that God's love revealed in Jesus, whose light still shines in the darkness, shines with us. Let us together share this sacrament in gratitude to God. For 
So I'm the one having trouble with the top lip. The bread of Christ broken and given for us. <coughs> the fruit of the vine, the new covenant poured out for us in Christ. Let us take a moment to give thanks together. God of eternal light, we thank you this day for the gifts that we've shared here at Christ's table. We are filled again with joy, for we are the ones who have heard good news of great joy. May we also be filled anew with love, for we have tasted the signs of your love revealed in Jesus. May we be filled afresh with hope, for your light shines in Christ, and in us too, to dispel the darkness. And may we be empowered to go into this new year in faith, as those who reveal the light of Christ through our living. Amen. Seated for our post group, and we'll move forward after. 